Welcome to Happy News Network, the mini-sode. We're here to brighten your week while you take a break from doom scrolling. I'm Shayna. And I'm Kristen. So Shayna, it's almost Hanukkah. I know. Hanukkah starts tomorrow night at sundown, and then we celebrate for eight days. Today's guest is here to help us celebrate the Festival of Lights. Please welcome Broadway's Tess Primax. Hi. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. I'm so excited to spend the little afternoon with you. Yeah, we're, we're so, so excited happy to have you. Have you. Um, so Tess, uh, we met on a five day p- benefit production of Fiddler on the Roof. Woo! What a marathon <laughs> that was. <laughs> yeah, it it was a sprint it was like a sprinting marathon um and you were also in the recent broadway revival of fiddler on the roof before that Mm -hmm. so did you get to celebrate hanukkah or other jewish holidays during that time yeah absolutely um Oh my god, man, our show was so much fun. That really did feel like a marathon <laughs> sprint, like Fiddler in Five Days. What would the cast of like 30 or it was so <laughs> Wow. It was so much fun. Um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so no, we, we, we absolutely did. Um, the producers had us over for um, a Shabbat dinner in the very beginning of the run, which was really wonderful. So like we all got to feel like, I mean, Fiddler is such a show about family. So I feel like it's so important for the company to feel like family. Yeah. Um, so that was really wonderful and special to be able to kind of like get to know everybody in a casual setting. Um, and then we did celebrate um, Hanukkah uh, as a company. I think we had a menorah backstage. We had shows on Hanukkah. So we couldn't really quite do it, but we did get some like sweet treats and things like that. We got to eat, secretly eat backstage. <laughs> yes. Not in costume, of course. Right. <laughs> Exploding jelly donuts all over your aprons. Yeah, right? <laughs> I just like, I don't really know anything about Hanukkah other than what the Rugrats taught me. So can you give me like a spark notes like way to explain its history yes i mean i'm sure the rugrats did an amazing job (laughs) they always do (laughs) but (laughs) i'll just reiterate what i think the rugrats probably shared with you um which is that hanukkah um usually takes place um late november or in december um this year it's in december um and it's an eight-day celebration um the word hanukkah means dedication it's often like it's often also referred to as the festival of lights um and a fun fact about hanukkah is it's not even in the torah so if you're looking for like information about it it's not even in there um and that's because the events that inspired the holiday happened after the torah was written um so that's kind of neat um (laughs) but basically um it commemorates the um the rededication of the temple uh uh, by the Maccabees after it was destroyed. And we celebrate it for eight days and we have delicious food and traditions. And it's, it's just a wonderful um, way to, um, you know, spend time with family and friends. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Thank you. Of course. That was such a great summary. I, I wish I'd had that in Hebrew school growing up. I would have been so much more engaged. <laughs> Honestly, all we needed was the Rugrats. Like I'm telling you, they probably do a better job than me. <laughs> When we get to Passover, just Rugrats Passover. It's fine. Yes, yes. Oh my God. Those writers were definitely Jewish. <laughs> For sure. Um, so do you have any favorite Hanukkah traditions? Um, I mean, aside from like spending it with family and friends, um, yeah. like when I was little um, and we would get together with some other families, I loved like finding the matzah where the, so the, like the matzah is like put in t- like put in half um and some and the kids like the the host or whoever like has started the gathering um hides the matzah and the little kids have to go around and find it and if you find it you get a prize so there's nothing as satisfying as finding that matzah let me tell you (laughs) was that passover or was that hanukkah was it passover i think we just also did it during hanukkah so So clever (laughs) and you know it keeps it keeps the kids entertained and out of the kitchen yeah Yeah. that was definitely a passover but (laughs) we played it during hanukkah because it was such a blast (laughs) i love love that that. (laughs) someone was asking me the other day if chocolate covered matzah would be a good hanukkah snack and i'm like it would for sure sell during passover but like well i feel like i have matzah too i feel like i have matzah on hanukkah like anyway (laughs) 
matzo brai is a delicious food and so i feel like it absolutely. fully fits in with the hanukkah food theme it absolutely does yeah oh yeah. i love love me some food um yes. what's your most memorable hanukkah gift that you have ever given or received um i love that question um i went on birthright before i did fiddler number one um, and I remember I got my mom um, a hamsa, which is like the hand, which is a protective symbol. Um, and I remember I got her that as um, like, I think I got it in a necklace form. And so I gave that to her. Um, and so that was, that was one of my favorite gifts to give because it was, wow. you know, it was from Israel. So that was super cool. Yeah. 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 What a sweet gift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to revisit Spark Notes a little bit. Would you mind telling everyone what a menorah is and what the shamash is? Of course. Words most people don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Um, so basically in the Bible, it's described as a lamp that's made out of pure gold. Um, and it was used in the portable sanctuary that, um, that was set up by Moses in the wilderness. Um, and like fresh olive oil was burned. Um, and basically a menorah has um, nine little lights and the one in the middle um, is like the servant helper candle that lights the other eight candles. Our family's menorah is definitely not made out of gold. <laughs> Very few are these days. It's definitely not when I, my current menorah, this is such a bizarre little side story. Um, I was a hostess at a restaurant in New York and it was during the holiday season and this very obvious Jewish uh, couple came in and both gentlemen were like dressed really nicely for their dinner. And I asked if they were seeing a show that night too. And I gave them a great table. They were like, do you celebrate Hanukkah? And I went, yeah, they're like, we just got this menorah as part of like a gift basket. You can have it. And it was like this cute little silver menorah. And I was like, great. Cause I don't have one in New York. So I was going to go get one from like you know, Dwayne Reed, but now I don't have to. No, <laughs> Those Dwayne Reed candles, I doubt their gold is a part of that. <laughs> I, probably not. <laughs> probably not, no. But they mean well. They mean well. We love Dwayne Reed. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my God. So we at Happy News Network love food and fun snacks, and there's a ton of food involved in Hanukkah. So can you explain what some of the Hanukkah snacks are and why they're usually oily or fried? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, often there's like gelt where you, you know, when you're little, like you play dreidel and you get gelt. Um, but often the food is oily and that could be like uh, potato pancakes, the latkes, um, jelly donuts. And the reason that they're um, oily is because the miracle of Hanukkah is that um, there was supposed to be only enough oil to light a candle for one day. And there was enough olive oil to light candles for eight days, which is why it's eight days. Wow. Yes. I'm going to have to stock up on olive oil for Hanukkah this year to really do the authentic celebration since there's Absolutely. nothing else to do for COVID. Yeah, right? You're, it's going to get real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, whatever went wrong there. So no. <laughs> True oil menorah this year. Let's really go for it. Yeah, let's own it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, our potato pancakes are like Prager's. <laughs> the best. They're the best. Yeah. Like I think you take for granted when you live in the greater New York area, you have access to so much good Jewish deli and Jewish food. You'd think South Florida would have that, but not on the West coast apparently. So like, there's just no good Jewish deli where we can be like, let's get potato pancakes and applesauce tonight. Like you just can't do it. Well, I feel like there's a market for that. It sounds like you gotta, if you're there for a while, maybe like a deli is... <laughs> Shayna's Deli, sponsored by She Don't Cook. So. <laughs> sponsored by She Don't Cook. Oh my god! I don't know. It's it's an untapped market. I think you should. This probably is true. I'm just gonna put this on the to do list. Open Deli. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I love it. Tess, thank you so much for being with us today. Happy almost Hanukkah. Happy almost Hanukkah. Thank you so much for having me. This is wonderful. So good to see you. Good to see you. So from all of us here at Happy News Network, I'm Shayna, and I'm Kristen. Have a happy day. Have a happy day. 